All right, everybody, welcome back to another special edition of Two Guys Talking Sports. Um, joined by a very special guest today. We do appreciate taking his time out of his busy schedule. Baseball starting very soon, which is a very uh, good thing to have. Um, we're joined today by Coach Kip Perlong um, from the Lakeview High School Gators. Uh, Coach, um, thank you for joining us today. Oh, glad to be here. Yeah, uh, so nothing nothing crazy. Um, before we do get started, I do just want to congratulate you on being selected to the South Carolina Baseball Coaches Hall of Fame. I know you were announced for the 2024 class. So, you know, I'm not going to have you talk yourself up too much, but just kind of tell us what that means to you and, you know, it says about you and your program. Honestly, it means more about the community and the mm -hmm. kids. Um, it, you've got to surround yourself with good people and the the people of Lakeview and the young men of Lakeview have just been, they go above and beyond each mm -hmm. year. I mean, they really, they, they work very hard. They're very resilient, uh, just raised really well. And, uh, very easy to coach. Yes, All I have to do is show up and, yeah. and keep the discipline side of it going, and mm -hmm. they take care of the rest. They love to compete. Good. Yeah, I saw um, this past week, and you all had your alumni game. Is that something new you all started, or is it you know kind of – I've seen that a lot lately. We actually – we did it a good bit back in the past, but when COVID hit, I think it was a few years before COVID, we didn't have it. And uh, when COVID hit, it kind of put us in a bind because uh, they – stipulated that you could only have one scrimmage and then they said well you can have two scrimmages mm -hmm. and the boys have been just on me after year after year about yeah. coach we need to do it again I, I, we finally broke down and said you know we're going to try to do it this year i had i think my my son-in-law austin newell and uh brooks garris a former player and also coach mm -hmm. for me uh, and my wife liz all pitched in and they they took the reins of doing a lot of the stuff that I normally have to do and it took a lot off me and it, it i tell you it was a great show and we had i think maybe 34 young men show up mm -hmm. ranging from the age of 45 down to ones that had graduated you know just last year so mm -hmm. it was very nice to see and i saw they i saw it on twitter that they had a nice little uh I don't know what you would call it, like a picture or something. Yeah, for Dar you. Darius Leonard came back and Darius played for me also and he um he had had uh, a young man that that does a great job painting he had him paint a portrait of uh of the family and and um and one of us holding our, i think the 21 trophy mm -hmm. trophy and uh he presented it to us that was a surprise he he, he um the fine young man enjoys giving back mm -hmm. and just you know just tickled to be in the community mm -hmm. yeah i was interviewing uh coach brown from Lada last week and you know his uh wife's that's right um and he was talking about how you know he's I didn't realize how much he does for the you know oh, the town yeah, of Lakeview yeah. and pours back into them. So it's always good to have somebody like that, you know, because Dillon County is not a big county. You right. know, where Dillon and Lakeview are a pretty small town. So it's always nice when you have somebody, you know, of his not stature, but who he is and the sport yeah. he plays and and gives back, you know, to that community. That's the beauty of him. He's he's never forgotten where he come came from. Um, and we talk about it a lot. I think a lot of conversations I have with him is don't forget about where you came from. Mm -hmm. Don't forget about where you're heading. Yes, sir. And he's not done that. He, he has really kept things in perspective. I can remember him washing cars uh, just to make extra money to go out or, mm -hmm. or whatnot. And uh, he, uh, he he's very grounded. His mother has done a super job with him mm -hmm. raising him. Yeah, that's awesome. And and now, do you have anybody that gets injured? Because I know if I tried to go out and throw Because I, I played baseball in high school and <laughs> – I have a, a coworker of mine where she she bet me I couldn't throw between fifty and sixty. Now I think I can do it. Now that I think that you could. that pitch might be my only throw I can make <laughs> though, because I have not thrown a ball in a long time. <laughs> we actually did. I have one young man uh, who used to play for me and uh, went on to the Citadel, and uh, he, I think he graduated in the twenty twelve class, maybe. Okay. Uh, and still in very good shape. He's mm -hmm. a police officer now in Charleston. Okay. And uh, he came back, and I think on the second or third play, he was running after a fly ball, and I, I saw him grab the hamstring. <laughs> he just couldn't believe it. Yeah, <laughs> oh, I, I can imagine that. That would that or my that. arm would go very fast. That's I try. You know, I, it's been a while. One of my best friends is the coach at Lancaster. Oh yeah. And uh, I think the, I went up for a game one time, and I threw a couple, and I just. 
I was sore the next day. I was like, there's no way I could get through that. Um, and I think it, you know, it speaks to the type of players you have, um, you know, from when you started in the early nineties and now it's yeah, over 30 years yeah, from now. What, what do you think is the big, big difference from when you started at Lakeview and compared to like where you are now in terms, maybe of players, how the games changed, like the way you approach stuff, maybe it, it has changed a lot. Um, especially with pitch counts and uh, the game has really pushed people to uh, just play one sport. Mm -hmm. I mean, it really has. Uh, and that's pretty much every sport we see now with travel ball mm -hmm. and uh, things going on. It, it's, it's, it's made student athletes individualized. I mean, they, they, mm -hmm. they have to specialize in one sport and stay with that year round. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing that, that, we tried to steer clear of. Um, we, we we encourage our young men to play multiple sports. Mm -hmm. um, you hear great people talk about it all the time, such as John Smoltz. I've heard him before mentioning how he, um, you know, he, he encourages that downtime of, mm -hmm. of throwing and, yeah. and and whatnot. Uh, Tom Glavin played uh, hockey and and, mm -hmm. and was a great pitcher. Obviously, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, you know, most of your older athletes really. Uh, believe in that downtime of the arm time and yeah. you know, just not specializing. You, sometimes you have to be a small fish in a big pond. It mm -hmm. might get you outside of your comfort zone yeah. and make you successful. And I think it's especially in baseball because, you know, there's no, like, you know, scientific data to yeah. back this up. But I feel like you see a lot more people in the high school and maybe early college days where, you know, they're needing Tommy John surgery because, yeah. you know, I can't imagine your arm, especially the way they try to throw as hard as they can now, you're – your body's not made to do that kind of activity 24-7, 365. Right. right. It has, you have to have recovery time in there. We have one that um, just graduated in 21 and went on North Greenville, Thomas Skipper, and he just went through Tommy John last March, and he's getting back now to close to full force with North Greenville and, and doing well. I had a son-in-law that um, – Jamie Callahan, who yep. went on with the Mets and the Red Sox and mm -hmm. Giants, and he kind of – had some shoulder issues and had some surgeries mm -hmm. and you know, there's only so many bullets in that arm and yeah. you really have to take care of it. Yeah. And it's, and there's no guarantee you're going to be the same right. after that. Cause I, I know, you know, with technology nowadays, it's, it's pretty, you, you don't really have to worry about it, but you just never know. It could just, it could, you know, I liken this to Mike Soroka for the Braves. Yeah. You know, he was probably one of their top prospects going to best young, young up and coming pitcher, towards Achilles and you know that's a serious injury and it's just kind of snowballed from there it's yeah it's yeah I, I like players do you have a lot of players that play multiple sports we really do uh, yeah. we, we you know most of our players play football and mm -hmm. baseball and a few play basketball also um going way back to when I first got there Daryl King who Daryl's our football coach now he actually played uh, football, basketball, and baseball. Um, so, you know, he, he gets both sides of it, and he helped me coach for a long time during baseball. Mm -hmm. And uh, we we really push our kids, you know, to, to, to play multiple mm -hmm. sports if they can. Yeah, and I think I read your brother's one of your assistant coaches. Yes, Is that he's correct? been with me for 31 years from day one. How is it? Because I know, like, brothers can have a love-hate relationship. You know? Oh, yeah, it's, it's absolutely. Just, it's a brother it's, it's, bond at the end of the day. Hey, we're <laughs> totally two opposite ends of the spectrum with one common goal. We love the, we love the game of baseball. Mm -hmm. um, and he, he is all the fire, and I'm all the ice. And uh, I've mm -hmm. said that for years and years. And I'm sure any player that you can go back and you can ask about, you know, it, it compliments each other well. Um, he, he's going he's gonna to get them fired up, and mm -hmm. I'm going to calm them down when yeah. they need to be calmed down. And mm -hmm. he, I think that's really been a big key to us – having the success that we've experienced at Lakeview. Yeah. Because you really have to have people that you depend on and that you can trust yeah. in. And and Chad and I, we we can go behind the dugout and we can discuss it and we'll, mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll yeah. hash it out just yeah. like brothers do. But, yeah, sir. You know, that's, that's part of it. It's <laughs> it's almost like a kind of a good cop, bad cop. But I think at the, you know, from a managerial standpoint, you, you have to be kind of more of that level-headed yeah. type figure where, yeah. you know, your assistants can sometimes get away with, you know, lighting a fire under a kid oh, yeah. or anything like that. Um, you know, talking about that eight state championships, been at Lakeview over 30 years, kind of going into last season. Um, really good season. Unfortunately, you know, lost in the state yeah. championship. It seems like it's destined between you and <laughs> Southside because like it's been, what, three consecutive? <laughs> um, 
I think it's been two years now. Uh, we didn't make it there the year before. Uh, what would that have been? Uh, 22? Yeah, because you won in 21. Yeah, last. won in 21, beat Southside Christian, and Southside Christian got us last year uh, in a best of three series, and uh, they have a very good ball club mm-hmm. coached by a you know, very good coach. Um, it's it's fun butting heads with them sometimes because, mm-hmm. uh, you know, these kids come from different, totally different areas. I mean, Southside Christian's coming from a big city, and, and these kids are uh, – they have all kinds of uh, bomb houses and uh, hitting facilities mm-hmm. and stuff at their disposal. Yeah. And there are very few around here. Uh, we've been blessed enough to where Chris Ford, a former player of mine who, uh, who now helps me coach at Lakeview – He's open. I encouraged him whenever um, when COVID hit, he was actually a professional umpire. Yeah, and, I, I uh, remember his seeing that. Through it. Yeah, and he's he's been an assistant coach of ours since then, and I encouraged him in teaching some lessons. It all started with <coughs> my son, Case, and um, you know, you get to a point to where coaching your son is very difficult, and mm-hmm. uh, you've got other people wanting you to work with their kids, and mm-hmm. your son won't even listen to you sometimes. <laughs> Not, you know, no, that's his father son stuff. But um, I say, Chris, I need you to take him and, and work with him offensively because Chris mm-hmm. is a really, really good yes, ball sir. player. And uh, he, he did a great job with him. I said, you know, you've got a knack for this. Uh, you need to get into teaching lessons. Mm-hmm. And he said, well, oh, I shut down. You know, we'll try it. And before I knew it, he was teaching lessons out of my backyard. And there would be 10, 12 cars parked back in the mm-hmm. back lot and mm-hmm. in the cages working. And, um, you know, it, it, it takes people like that that, yeah. that that are really committed mm-hmm. to the game and committed to kids around our area. And I, I think, you know, I'm, I'm not a coach, but I don't – some people may not realize, like, what all it takes to coach high school sports because it's different. These are kids where, you know, when you make it to the collegiate level, you're expected to be, a you know, an adult. You, you, you kind of look after yourself within a sense of, you know, degree – but, you know, you're – and I said this, I think, with Coach Cower from Dillon, you're basically like a, another parent Absolutely. to them during – because baseball is a long season yeah. compared to, like, football. You're only playing once a week. Now, in baseball, it's two to three. When you get in the playoffs, it could be more than that. Um, you, you mentioned coaching your son. It, it How difficult – I wouldn't say difficult. Like, do you have to f- kind of check yourself, like, and remember he's – you know, he's my son, but I'm also a coach. Is that is that difficult – Honestly, yeah, um, it, it, I have to have him check himself sometimes because he thinks he's a coach also. He's been around <laughs> his entire yeah. life. He's probably been to more ball games between all of Jamie's games and all of our daughter who played at North Greenville's games <laughs> and all of my games. It, you know, he, know, he knows, knows a lot about the game, <laughs> but uh, sometimes I have to keep him in check <laughs> there too. You know, yeah. you, you haven't got a, a doctor's degree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sir. <laughs> and, but, uh, yeah, it, it's very difficult. My brother had two sons that came through, one that plays at North Greenville, one that's currently um, playing uh, Brent Herlong, who played at North Greenville and okay. was a closer for the national championship game. And then uh, uh, Hunter Herlong, who is now at Francis Marion playing. And I saw it coming whenever his kids came through. I said, look, you, you coach the other 24 kids on this team, mm-hmm. but two of them I don't want you to deal with yeah. at all, and those were the two. Mm-hmm. And I have re- asked him to return the favor now with Case, and, you know, mm-hmm. you, you coach him. I'm going to coach the rest mm-hmm. of them. You and, keep him straight. And he's a he's a junior, right? He is a junior, yes. yes sir. Yes. So he, he's got a, a lot of ball. Like, you know, I, I know that I think he's your only, your only son, uh, yes. you know, besides son-in-law. Like how – and you can even talk about your daughters as well. Like how yeah. proud of you – are you of him for, you know, cause I know he's getting recruited and everything like, is that tough to kind of deal with, you know, talk about how, you know, how much of a hard worker he is in all your other players as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all of our kids really, you know, work together and work hard. Um, I'm sure tonight, whenever we get home, Casey's going to say, I'm going to meet such and such at the, it's usually Tucker Bass or Chris McGill or Ian Caps or whoever he, he'll, I'm going to the bomb house to, to work some. I mean, that's, <laughs> That's just kind of the work ethic that really and truly his mother put into him. Mm-hmm. Is she she she's by the book straight down the line. Mm-hmm. You do this, you do that, you do this, mm-hmm. and uh, he, he's he, it's it's helped him. Uh, it's helped our girls uh, tackle life in today's society mm-hmm. because today's society seems to be a little freer and easier going. Um, yeah. You have to have structure, and mm-hmm. uh, she does a great job. I've got to give her all the credit mm-hmm. for that. Um, yes, sir. So, that's kind of where that goes. Uh, we've been very blessed to have some three great children, and uh, and you know he's still out out, out open because he's seventeen years old. It's going to take a little while. We'll, yeah. we'll see how he turns yeah. out. The girls yeah, have sir. turned out very well. And yeah, 
Uh, we're very proud of them. Good. And going back to the South Side, this is one thing because you, like I said, we you've been coaching a long time, and I saw this was the NFC Championship game where Dan Campbell came out after the game and basically told his players, like, listen, it's okay to be mad. So, but you know, it's and I'm paraphrasing. This could be the only time you get here. Yeah. You know, when when you've played in all your state championships, I know you've won eight. You've played for more. What what do you tell a because ultimately your goal at the end of the at the beginning of the season is to win the last game of the season, and that's not always the case. Like, is there a formula? Or is there anything you can say to kids after that? You know, the game. Honestly, the internal drive is there with with young people. They 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 want to be pushed, and they want to to work hard, and they want to see the success uh, and and the failures because we learn obviously more through failing than we do succeeding. Mm -hmm. um, I can calling back. Uh, I can remember. Uh, we had a group that had 49 straight wins in the state of South Carolina. They surpassed the previous mark, which was like 35 or something. And uh, we were playing Dixie for a state championship. And Dixie broke that. They, we won the first game of that series, and Dixie, we went to Dixie, and they beat us. I can remember Anthony Waters uh, playing for us, who was a former NFL yeah. player. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a long time ago. Yeah, it was. It really was. <laughs> and uh, I got down in the corner. You know, I think we lost like four to three or four to two, something like that. And I got down in the corner with him to finally join him at the end of the ball game. And, and yeah, you, know, you look around, and I, just looking around at their eyes, they, they just watched Dixie celebrate. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, you could tell it was burning. There's nothing I could say mm -hmm. to make it better. Nothing mm -hmm. I could say to fire them up more because mm -hmm. they were fired up just from watching that. Yes, sir. Um, so I said. Take it all in, understand what happened, find out why it happened, and then do something about it. We got one more game, and I think they beat that crowd fifteen to nothing in the yeah. final game of the state championship. Because you know, that's there's big. a lot of internal fight, and mm -hmm. that's, that that shows you know that young men are going to be successful. They're mm -hmm. going to learn from their failures, and they're going to do something about it. Mm -hmm. and, and that's you know, that's, that's part of coaching. That's what you really love to mm -hmm. see is finding pe people that can how they overcome adversity. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. And and I, I know kind of looking, you've got, what, four or five seniors returning. Did you lose a lot from last year's oh, team? Oh, we really did. I, one just left me a few minutes ago, Zach Hunt, who is at, uh, he's I, at Florence Darling. I saw him, I think it was on ESPN. It may have been this summer when they were in the World Series, or it may have been last summer. Oh, yeah. It was last summer. Okay, it, it, yeah. They were playing in the World Series. Mm -hmm. Fine young man, great hitter. Um, he uh, – He's at Florence Darlington right now. He came to see me this afternoon. Uh, we we're talking a little bit, talking about some struggles or some things that we go through. And uh, it's, like you said earlier, it's a lot about being a parent more so mm -hmm. than it is about being a coach mm -hmm. and listening and letting people talk. But um, he, he's he, he's got a good head on his shoulders. He's he's finding out that it's a little different on the next level. Each <laughs> level there's a little bump. Yeah. Each level there's a little bump. Yes, yeah, sir. We've got to figure out how to attack the them offensively. Pitching wise he's doing very well. Mm -hmm. Um but he, he he's he's gonna be just fine where he's at. I think he and Noah Cribb, Noah Cribb was another that we lost a left handed pitcher. Um he's also at Florence Darlington and Tyler James was our center fielder, so we did lose three off of last year's team. Mm -hmm. Um now we lost three good ball players but we lost three fine people. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they, they were the heart and soul of, of leading the way it should be led. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm hoping and I'm starting to see some of it with our current four seniors, uh, the leadership st skills that they watched, they're starting to implement. Mm -hmm. So I'm seeing that happen. Yeah, I think you find out real quick if you, you know, played high school ball and you get to the collegiate level or, or if you, you're, you know, fortunate enough to get drafted. I think you find out really quick if you actually really love the game of baseball because right. it's it's a full time job. Uh, very much so, very and it's much it's so. more so you know, and, and, and I can attest for, for all like major universities. But I had a friend who played at a, a school in South Carolina, and it's it's really you have to take the ownership yourself. Like you you have to get in the gym, you have to do your workouts or whatever. You know, it's it's not somebody's going to be there holding your hand per se yeah. uh so I th yeah it's 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 and more the first so thing i tell mine is making sure we're taking care of the classroom first that's what they're there <laughs> yeah. for that's, yeah that's what right. we tend to forget as student athletes but uh it, 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 speaking about that I, that's the first thing i tell my young men whenever they have aspirations of going off to college and mm -hmm. playing that it's a full-time job i mean you're gonna earn every every ounce of scholarship or every even if you not get one mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're gonna earn your way because yeah. it, it between the, the bus rides and the 
long nights and lack of sleep, and we still got to get classwork done. Exactly. And and, and I'll, some people may not realize they don't really give out full scholarships oh, no, no. In, in baseball. Yeah. I think they get – I think I, I may even talk with Coach Coward about this. Like they get, what, 12 to 13 scholarships, yep. and you have to Just learn how to – Navigate. divvy it up and yeah. you know with in the world of nil now like you know some kids have a little bit more opportunity to yeah. kind of use that to pay for tuition um is, is that something you're uh, involved in as a baseball coach when your kids are getting recruited or do you have like college coaches reach out to you or do they reach out to the kids directly and then they ask you for advice uh we do sometimes we'll have a coach call and ask about a kid and we'll Tell him uh, where he's at, what he's doing, and how he can help, and what his pot, his strengths and weaknesses are. And uh, we try to give our kids advice. Uh, the biggest thing nowadays, it's it's totally different. Back whenever I first started, when when you first started, uh, I think we had one of the highest recruited ones we had was Josh Crib, um, who went on the Clemson mm-hmm. pitch. Uh, he he was recruited by. I could, I could get on the phone and call Coach or I call <laughs> South Carolina or I call Clemson, and mm-hmm. you know, within the next couple of days, the coach will be here. Well, it doesn't happen that way nowadays mm-hmm. with the travel ball the way it is now. We're experiencing that also with Case and our son and a lot of our players now that are with us. You have to get out and you have to go to these big showcases, whether it be in Georgia or Florida mm-hmm. or wherever. Um, to allow those coaches to see you because a coach would obviously much rather go to a place where he can see 30 different kids Mm -hmm. in a matter of one or two days than he would traveling all the way down Mm -hmm. to see one kid in one afternoon. Is that something you encourage? Because now those showcases and everything, um, I interviewed Coach Selmer from Lancaster, and I know they have a big showcase up around Winthrop. Mm -hmm. Um, Is that something where they – is it mostly done during, like, fall, like, football season or do they do a lot more because I, I know they're playing you know travel ball during the summer but they have mm-hmm. showcases in the summertime yeah a lot of ours a, a lot of your showcases um will be like the black bear in in georgia um and it's played throughout golly days probably about 20 or 30 different places in georgia during that time at high Jeez. school stadiums <laughs> and mm-hmm. independent stadiums and you're talking about Three, four hundred teams playing at the same time, and uh, it's 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 a big deal. You'll go and you'll see five or six coaches at one field. You may see ten or twenty, depending on who's playing there. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's the the best way to get seen, but the work has to come with it. You mm-hmm. can't just be on a team and go play. Mm-hmm. The, the the work in the afternoons and. Uh, after you get home from football practice, go hit in the cage, uh, you, or go throw a bullpen. You know, it has to be done along with that. But it it, it is a a better avenue to to get kids uh, seen and by you know coaches. And it, it seems like it's like that way for basketball too. Whereas with it football, is. they don't have that. I mean, they have like seven on seven camps in the off season, but uh, it's with especially with it, with baseball. I feel like the travel ball circuit is usually from my experience is where people get most recognized because you could just have a great season. I, I remember there was a, a player that played at Florence Darlington and he pitched and he had like one or two, three really good games and ended up just getting a scholarship offer to South Carolina. Right. You know, it's, do you, do you see that a lot more work, especially because I feel with the way, and, and I don't want to get too much in the IO because I could talk for hours oh, yeah, on that. Yeah, um, but do you see, because you can kind of see it at the football level, do you see it a lot more as your experience as a coach in baseball where these college coaches maybe aren't putting a big emphasis on high school players right away where they're, because they can go to a JUCO like a Florence Darlington and get a more season, you know, season player oh, yeah. that may, you know, because they teach them, you know, it gets more experience there compared to coming out of a high school. Yeah, I, I absolutely see it a lot now. Um, we went over to watch Florence Darling to play this past fall because we had a few players playing for him. I think Noah Cribb, Noah Carter, and uh, Zach Hunt were all there. And so we went over to watch them, and I bet there were probably 10 or 12 scouts in the mm-hmm. stands uh, from different schools around the state, big schools. I mm-hmm. uh, won't go into names, but um, – you can go in and you can get a kid like that coming out of JUCO. Mm-hmm. And like you say, he's polished. He's facing mm-hmm. 90, 90 plus each yeah. day. And um, you can take those kids as opposed to taking your high school kids. And it's it's a fine line. You have to put yourself in a position to be seen 
and you have to perform whenever that time comes. Yeah, um, it's 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 tough on young men these days, especially coming right out of high school. Yeah, because you know, and I, like you mentioned earlier, where you have you know these one sport athletes that just play, you know, whatever sport year round. You know, yeah. so I feel like they are more prepared. Um, but I still, you know, it's it's a difference because you know in high school you're limited on what you're gonna see sometimes. Right. You know, you you may face a, a team that's lesser than you where their pitchers, you know, maybe breaking 84, 85 right. the max, and then you know, you go to collegiate level, they're not throwing below ninety four, and you've never seen something like that before. It's, it's I don't yeah, it's it's a big <laughs> difference. It, there's a big difference, but and it's only six mile an hour, but that's yeah. a big six oh, miles absolutely. an hour. Absolutely, because now out into the um into the showcases, the bigger showcases where you find those, uh, those arms. And that's, that's where it helps some of them to where they can make that transition quicker. Uh, cause to get stuck in one small area, yeah, you can't make that transition when it opens. I played so. travel ball growing up and it was, I think we were called the Dillon County all-stars yeah. and we were, I think I was 10 when we first started, but we ended up making a nationals and we played at Disney world. Oh yeah. And, uh, our first game was against a team from Tampa, and I kid you not, that kid looked like he. It was like in Space Jam where they're the mon. They, I mean, they looked like they were six four and they had beer, <laughs> and we're just eleven year old kids that you know are five foot tall, and that was the biggest culture shock I have oh. ever seen. We played a team from California, and I thought you know we were good, but it's you know seeing some of those kids, it's like oh my, and I can't imagine that you go from a, like a small. High school, when you go to a, a bigger college, it's it's somewhat of an eye open experience. It's tough making the transition, and that's that's what we talk to our kids about all the time is is how to make that transition. That, you know, don't forget about where you come from. Mm -hmm. uh, continue to work hard, and things will fall in. Um, but it does. It, it opens some of them's eyes. They get there and say, "Ooh, what am I doing here?" Uh, I can remember Brent the first time he went off to North Greenville. Yeah. Nothing really worked Brent up. Brent was more of a, a studious guy, he, he, a very smart young man, and uh, they fell in love with him. I believe when Landon was uh, interviewing him for his thing, Brent was on his phone chasing Pokemon or something. <laughs> they just loved him. I mean, yeah. it was, was kind of unique. And uh had that same conversation with Zach uh, last year because uh, golly, they, James Madison was also recruiting okay. in Division One, and he had three or four more different – three or four different offers on the table and uh asked him what's your heart tell you you know i could tell he was a lot of a home but mm -hmm. he really mm -hmm. didn't want to veer too far away from home and uh he said I, you know my sister played softball at florence darlington mm -hmm. and we talked about it a little bit and, uh, ultimately it was he, he and his parents decision but i think he made a great one by being where he's at yeah and and that's something i talked with <clears throat> coach selmer about you know it's <clears throat> You know, you always have those, <clears throat> excuse me, those aspirations to to play major, and sometimes you're, you you may not be ready for that. Um, is <clears throat> and you, I know you talk with you know co you know Zach about that. Is that something you tell a lot of your players that you know are maybe being recruited by some of these bigger schools, and it, you you may think it's not ultimately the right decision for them at that time. Is that something you know you? The you, biggest you, thing that I talk with them about is finding a fit that's going to fit you. Um, it, it, what are you interested in going to education wise? Cause mm -hmm. that's, that's what we're going to school for to begin mm -hmm. with. And, uh, it kind of goes from there and then we'll, how, 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 how are you going to live away from home? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you, when you get out from under mom's wing, are you going to wake up every morning <laughs> and you're going to be on time? Or are you going to be getting the homework done at night? Yeah. It, it's, there's a lot of things to think about. And I just try to open kids eyes, you know, to what, what the reality of the situation is and, and, and I guess play devil's advocate a little bit about some things mm -hmm. and, and let him make the final decisions. Yeah, because I feel like it's you know it could be complete wrong, but I, f I feel like sometimes, especially in college athletics now with the transfer report, I, I f sometimes I feel like it's it's more like empty promises. Maybe if that's the right word, where coaches may tell you what you want to hear, no. but then it's you know and you went for that that big school where it's like you know you can go to this school and you know they're more focused on developing you and making you ready for that bigger step. And, you know, you, compared to going to a bigger school, you know, they may not give you that same type of focus and, you know, coaching that you may need. Yeah. You, you, there are a lot of false promises these days in, in this world, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's tough to find those old school coaches that, that, that uh, live by what they say. They're still out there. And uh, you just have to kind of listen a lot more than you talk and, and, 
try to understand what's going on during the recruiting process. And I feel like for you, I, you don't really see, at least from what I know, you know, just being from Dillon, you don't really see many people or coaches stay in a position for like you have for so long. You know, I know Coach Hayes at Dillon was there early 90s. Yeah. He's, you know, retired now. You just don't really see many coaches. You know, Coach McLaurin, I know Coach yeah. King's been coaching them for a long – you just don't see a lot – like you, you don't see that a lot. And I feel like you, you lose, I don't know, a lot of knowledge from coaches, you know, because there's a – you know, I'm sure these younger coaches can attest. They don't probably know as much in terms of experience-wise as somebody who's been in a position, you know, for o- over three decades. Yeah, I don't know. I, I forget a lot these days. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's easy to do. But, but there's uh, – the, the biggest thing that you can do and uh, is uh, to be honest with them. And any player that's ever played for me, um, can I tell you that that I if I'm gonna be nothing else with them, it's gonna be honest. It, <laughs> if I tell you you're not any good, you're not any good at that <laughs> point. Do something about it, make yourself better. Um, if if you're completely honest with them, then uh, things tend to work out. As far as being in one place for such a long time, Lakeview is it's been a godsend to me. I accidentally kind of happened into this this job many years ago. My ex coach, uh, Coach Don Creo, <laughs> over in Marion. Yep. Who coached in Lada yep. and Marion for a long time? Um, he his son was in the hospital one night, and Mr. Arnett, our principal over there, who had done, coached baseball for a long time in Lakeview, um, his son was in the hospital. And they passed each other, and just so happened at the time, I was teaching in Andrews, driving from Marion, and helping Mike Johnson at Georgetown High School coach baseball. Uh, yeah, I was very Put some hungry miles in at the car. A young age. That was <laughs> yeah. my first two years out. I was teaching at a middle school in Andrews. And Mike and I had met, and uh, I was coaching against him in a, in a summer league program. He said, you oh, by chance, uh, you're not looking for a job, are you? And I said, well, by chance I am. I just graduated from Winthrop. Mm-hmm. And at that point in time, it was very difficult to find jobs in South Carolina in physical education. And he said, I may call you Monday. Let me get your number. And back then, we didn't have cell phones. Yeah. You had to yeah, stand yeah, by the phone. A, All right. Or a beeper or something. <laughs> yeah. And I got that call Monday Monday morning. He said, can you be in Andrews at like 10 o'clock? And this is like at 8 o'clock. I said, I can sure try. And uh, it kind of went from there. But long story short, driving that distance and, and trying to stay into what you love, the game of baseball and teach and coach. And uh, Mr. Arnett and uh, uh, Coach Cribb um, met in the hospital, and, and Edison was trying to get out of it because he had taken the principal's job at Lakeview High, mm-hmm. High School. And uh, – he, he asked Coach Cribb if he knew anybody that, you know, was interested in baseball and interested in coaching. So it kind of went from there. And mm-hmm. uh, having the the the, the, the honor to, to coach under Coach Mack and Coach Rogers for all those years. And yeah, cause I've been involved in football since day one, too. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it just learned a lot by watching and talking very little and listening a lot mm-hmm. more. It seems like there's – because he is he still the principal at Lakeview? He, he is not the principal. This is okay. the first year that he's not. Chris Ray took over principal. Okay. Edison's actually still – Mr. Arnett is still uh, teaching with us. He, he didn't want to get out totally, mm-hmm. but uh, he did want to relieve some duties. And, and he's, mm-hmm. he's, he's he's still around, so he's, he's, he, he can't get rid of it. I think that's a good <laughs> thing about Lakeview, it seems, because it doesn't seem that – you know, at least from what I know, not seem to be a lot of turnover there's in really not, athletics. Uh, there's really not in in uh, in the old days. Uh, really, in teaching in, in in the classroom too, there was not a whole lot of turnover. Most of them mm-hmm. came, loved it, and stayed. Mm-hmm. And, uh, it, it's it's like a small town community. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's it's you don't have nearly as many worries as you do in these bigger towns. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've had opportunities to go different places and. Uh, I wouldn't trade anything for it because it's been very good to my family and, mm-hmm. and myself. And uh, I just – my my heart bleeds blue and gold. Now. Yeah. Now, you, you started your college playing career, from what I understand, at French Marion. Yes, and I went French to, Marion and Coach Griffin. Went to Winthrop. Winthrop. Yeah. What uh, – during your time, did you ever think when you were playing college ball – did you ever have aspirations to play beyond that, or did you know ultimately one well, day you wanted to get into coaching? Yeah, I had I had uh, aspirations of playing well beyond it, but I was not that good. <laughs> Join the club, honestly. Just Join joined, the club. You know, I, I could do a lot of everything, and 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 it wasn't great at anything. I, I, I can remember uh, coming on as a shortstop, and Coach Griffin saying, "Well, how long didn't you pitch for Marion too?" I said, "Well, yes, sir." He said, "Well." 
we want to look at your pitching. And uh, Erlong, didn't, can't you catch something? Yes, sir. I, <laughs> yeah. I'll do whatever you whatever it takes mm-hmm. to get on the field. And uh, it, it, uh, I wouldn't trade that either because it helped me learn a lot of different positions mm-hmm. and uh, it helped uh, learning the game inside and out. And uh, it's, it's played a key role in, 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 in our coaching. And, uh, yeah, my brother used to work at Winthrop in their athletic department and dealt uh, – He one of the sports he covered was baseball. And when he was there, it was – Coach Turbeville? No. It, Erginus was there. Mm-hmm. Uh, Hudak, Hudak was coached before yeah. him. Yeah. Uh, so – and he's now at Furman. Yeah. Um, and uh, I don't like – they canceled their baseball yeah, program. Uh, I'm hoping they'll bring it back. I, hopefully so. I know yeah. a lot of people weren't yeah. happy about that situation that happened. Um, it kind of piggybacking all – or going back to what you said earlier about losing the players you did last year, but you're starting to see – some of your your seniors or maybe even underclassmen taking on a little bit of a leadership role. What what do you ultimately look for? Is that something where you where you go to players, or do you just kind of let it happen organically? About you know specific a little, leaders, a little bit of both. To be quite honest, um, you you kind of nudge them in the right direction, and you make it clear that this is their team. This is not my team. This mm-hmm. is not Lakeview's team. This is those seniors' team. And how are you going to lead? How are you going to mm-hmm. well, you know what are your aspirations for the season what, mm-hmm. what, are you, what are your goals and uh you put ownership in the, in their court and and you know, that way it's, it's kind of like part of growing up it's kind of mm-hmm. like that next step going to college well you've got ownership of this team what are you mm-hmm. gonna do with it um uh, i can recall when we went through that spell of uh consecutive state championships um we lost eight starters out of nine the 2001 team mm. and had to replace them with a, a bunch of young men who had sat and rode the coattails of those young men for so many years. Mm. Uh, and that was actually the the um, Anthony Waters and Johnny Doback and T.J. Norton. Josh Cribb was a part of that. Oh, T.J. Um, that, that whole crowd. Mm. And I, I, going into that season, I was like, man, going to be terrible what are we going to do we lost eight starters mm-hmm. you don't just get back to a state champ when those kids came back double dipped uh lamar for the lower state championship and made it back to a state championship they didn't win the state championship mm-hmm. but they made it back there so yeah it was their team to to win and lose and they knew that i'm seeing all the stars and i'm just now recognizing that, that it's the state that, championship that, 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 yeah that was an accident <laughs> I, I, i've forgotten all about no. this thing i told daryl said man i'm gonna have to go home and change clothes for I mean, sweats, and so he said, "You're a coach." Yeah, that's, exactly. That's what we wear. It, it, it's not a, a, a NBC interview. It's no no <laughs> dress code. But in that seeing that kind of brought a question: Does it ever? And I won't say getting old, but does it ever? Is your next win just as good as your first win? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, every every win, every loss is huge. It, it, you still get giddy before a ball game. I mean, mm-hmm. the, the hardest part of coaching is all the prep work. Mm-hmm. The, the easiest thing to do in coaching is coach a game. And I'm sure any coach that's done it for any period of time can tell you that. Um, it, 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 there's a lot more work getting out there and cutting grass and worrying about what will go wrong, uh, lining off fields, making out lineups. Mm-hmm. Uh, but when the game starts, it, it's 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 – like you just started all over again. So, mm-hmm. no, you ne- that never gets us old. Yeah. Really, that never. <laughs> now, are you responsible for making your your schedule each year, or is it something yeah. where the, the athletic director kind of comes the to The region you? schedule's pre-made um, throughout the region and the rest of it. Um, it I, I make up. Or I, we try to schedule and get, and get it locked in, and we try to keep it to where we don't have too many games in one week because – with the pitch counts this day and time is very tough on small schools, mm-hmm. yeah. and I, I'm a, you know, I, I'm a stickler with with arms. I, I do the best that we can to protect our kids, mm-hmm. and uh, we've got eight pitchers throwing right now, trying to just get through seven innings. Yeah. I mean, um, yeah, that's what you have to prepare for the way it's built in. I, I I really do. I'm glad that they've implemented a pitch count. I think it helps. It also makes it very difficult sometimes. Some people take advantage of it. You can push kids further than what you want to push them. Mm-hmm. Um, trying to keep their pitch counts down and trying to it, it go in and, and, and form other pitchers or, or people that can throw and get you through innings is a big thing. That's where Tyler James was very important to us the past couple of years. Mm-hmm. He, 
Tyler probably didn't throw 75, but we started him teaching him how to throw from down here and mm -hmm. he gave a different look. He got a lot of ground balls for mm -hmm. us. He did a super job for us. You know, if we needed a big out, we could go to him. Uh, and those kind of pitches are a dime a dozen. They, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, he just he, – he did a super job of that. that was a, we did it with Brent when Brent was young because, you know, over the top he realized, you know, you're not going to throw much over 80, 81. Mm -hmm. And so when we moved him down here – uh, it took off, and like I say, he helped pitch his way to a national championship. You know, down there and just getting that movement. It seems like it would be more natural because you know I know with softball, oh yeah, uh, you can have just one good pitcher, and that they you can use that right. all year long. So it seems like they're throwing down here. It might be a little bit more natural. It is. It um, is. And like I said, there was a pitcher for South Carolina, John Taylor, who played at Florence yep. Darlington. Yep. Um, don't throw it hard, way. but man, he, yep. he I mean he was. Yep. He was very reliable, and it, like I said, that that I feel like that's something college coaches look for. Maybe it, is. it, it, it kind of sets yourself apart. That's the first thing Landon asked whenever he was asking about Thomas Skipper, because Thomas Skipper was probably upper eighties. He touched low ninety. Um, you know, does Thomas throw from down there? I said, well, we worked him down there a little bit, and he, he can throw from down there. It doesn't get quite as low as Brent's, and it's all about angles and, mm -hmm. and deception and, uh, and giving somebody a look that they don't see very often. If you can get sink on the ball from down there, you can really get a lot of ground balls and mm -hmm. cut some damage down. What? Because you know, baseball is a little different than like football and basketball, where you don't really have set plays. You can yeah. position players, or you can call us like a bunt or hit and run. What, like, what is a what's a like preparing for a game like for you? Is it something? Do you have like scouting reports, or do you talk to other coaches about teams you're playing? I do most of the scouting myself and trying to find stuff out sometimes we'll talk to other coaches uh we keep tabs on uh, every game that we play every at bat uh that another team takes where they hit it we position mm -hmm. players and it, it does help us out a lot towards the end of the season mm -hmm. it's tough early on but you have players return to other teams uh the next year and and you can go off of what they've done in the past of course then you have to make uh some consolations to the fact that they uh they their body has changed a little bit they may pull the ball a little bit more than what they used to but um we try to keep up with our scouting reports pretty good. Chris Ford does a great job of that. He scouts every pitch that's, that's hit and where it's hit and what count is. And then we'll sit back down. We'll we'll uh, go through it and we'll check. And you sometimes we've even gotten to the point where we're giving our kids cards. You see it in the major leagues all the time where they're checking the cards. Mm -hmm. Where's the guy hit? You know, it helps I see. Lining, uh, you know, watch the Braves. Stuff. I've seen Ronald Cunha do that a couple oh, yeah, of times. Yeah. And. Um, one thing I, I did want to ask, because I saw a, 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 a interview you did where y'all maybe had like a, a bump in the road. How do you manage them throughout a longer season? Because, you know, like I said, with other sports, maybe so more so with basketball, but, you know, you're playing multiple times a week. You, what do you tell your players or, or even a specific player if you're they're not doing as good or if your team kind of hits a skid? You know, is that something, you, you know, you kind of approach them a little bit differently? Honestly, we try not to change too much. If if we hit a, a bump in the road and it's it's just you know from being lackadaisical or really not showing up quite as good as we should have or felt like we should have, we may go out and totally change practice and do something different. We've there's been times we've gone out and we played wiffle ball, uh, we've gone out and we played pickle. I mean, mm -hmm. it's just days just, you got to remember it's a game. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, yes, sir. Forget it. Forget that it's a game. Uh, then you kind of get lost in it. Mm -hmm. you all in all, days in, it's a game. You love doing it. You do it because you love it, mm -hmm. uh, and, and you've got to enjoy it. If you don't enjoy it, you enjoy it. Exactly, and I, I feel like in coaching for so long, you can tell you love it because, oh, yeah. um, you know, it's it, you dedicate a lot of your time to yeah. doing that. It's, Thanks to my wife. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll get to her in just a few minutes because, you know, season's coming up. I know yeah. you had a, a, a scrimmage day against Mary, and that was canceled because, yeah. you know, Mother Nature decided to rain today. What what are what are things you look for from your players in scrimmages? Is it something where, you, you know, you maybe have players that you you know how they are, but you may have some newcomers. Do you, do you view that as an opportunity for them to show you what they're capable of? Well, first and foremost, and this has gone on for 30 years, um, we're going to bunt the ball first time. If your first at bat is going to be a bunt. You're going to get your sacrifice bunt down or your bunt down once you're clear, you're clear. Uh, we'll, we'll break it down to where if, if you get a walk, that's a positive. You've cleared, you can swing the next time. Mm -hmm. But uh, we've actually won state championship games just bunting a ball. I can remember back uh, when our first one, actually, Benji Renfro was playing for us, um, Jason Snipes, uh, a bunch of good young men and, and 
Ashley Moody. Uh, we were playing Landrum at Landrum, you know, 1995, a bunch of country boys up in the upstate, never been too far. Uh, I think the first six batters that ball game bunted for us, us, and we had a four run lead in the first inning before mm-hmm. we got out of it, took all the pressure off. I, bunting, uh, does a lot. They have to make a play. Mm-hmm. They have to yeah. make a throw, and they have to make a catch. Mm-hmm. Pressure does a lot of strange things towards the end of the season. So yeah. we, 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 I'm an old school guy. Yeah, we're gonna bunt. Mm-hmm. We're gonna push runs over. We're gonna try to score a run here and there. And uh, so we use it as a tool to to do what we do, what we're gonna do to be successful first. And then we start looking uh, at other kids that may have looked good in batting practice or may have looked good at a position. Uh, we'll plug people in and out trying to find out what exactly the right uh, format is. We've had uh, in 21, actually, uh, uh, we had a young man who, uh, who didn't work himself into the lineup until the playoffs last year even. Uh, Bryce King worked himself into to the lineup uh, after the playoffs started. Mm-hmm. I mean, it happens year in and year out. Uh, you have to keep working. You have to keep pushing yourself in the cage, and you have to keep showing up at practice and showing that you can do something to, to contribute so it changes yeah i i feel like you know maybe fundamentals have kind of gone away from sports nowadays i saw a, a inter, it was a video and it was talking about the european players coming into the WNBA or excuse me into the nba and just how skill skilled they are at just basic fundamentals and how much it helps them whereas over there it seems like they put more emphasis on practicing compared to over here, it's all about games, and it's you, you, you know. And I feel like you talking about bunning. That's a very important part of the game. Very selfless. And yeah. like I said, you putting the ball in play forces whether if it's a bunt or you're hitting it between second and shortstop, you're forcing the team to make a play. And that's they either will get the out or that's when mistakes happen. And that's one thing Urquhart says uh, to all our kids when they get over there with him. We have a lot of them that play play with him mm-hmm. over there. Uh, for post one, he says, you come from Lakeview, I know darn well you know how to bunt. <laughs> I feel like nobody knows how to bunt. You yeah, see all these professionals yeah. can't lay a bunt down. I, mean, I know it's going 100 miles an hour. Exactly. It's a little tougher. They've got a little more movement, but uh, it should be done. I, it, it is. The day society is really pushed towards, ah, me, me, me. It's mm-hmm. all about me and, and what I can do and what I, what I can – You know, it's not about the team. Mm-hmm. And when you lose sight of that in team sports, you lose. I saw a, – a, it was a video. It was a, a short – and I don't know where the, the – Per person was from but it was a short stop and he fielded it and i bet he took five seconds and but then he fired at 100 miles an right. hour right. and they loved it i was yeah. like well i mean yeah. unless you're just accurate 100 percent of the time it's not always a good <laughs> see a thing quick release yeah, yeah that. <laughs> exactly um or you know how excited are you about this season I, i'm i'm excited I, i'm always excited about every season regardless mm-hmm. uh as, as to what we have returning or what we don't have returning it's just and, and i guess the biggest thing is to watch kids kids grow watch them uh Watch them improve. Watch them persevere. Uh, that's that's the satisfaction I get out of it. Is to see a kid that's maybe worked his butt off in the cage uh, all during the season and worked on one specific thing and, and made himself better to make himself useful. Mm-hmm. Uh, just seeing that success uh, and, and it, that's what coaching's about. Mm-hmm. It's not about it, to an extent. Yeah, it is about the wins and losses. Mm-hmm. I'd be lying if it would yeah. didn't say that. Yeah, I mean, you want to win more than you lose, obviously. Mm-hmm. But uh, if you lose sight of what you're actually doing out there and it's helping young men grow, teaching them that baseball is a microcosm of life and mm-hmm. you learn a lot through it by hard work and perseverance, mm-hmm. then uh, it's very satisfying. Yeah. Well, we wish you good luck. Uh, one last thing. You mentioned it earlier, um, how important your wife is. Uh, and I give credit to Coach Coward from Dillon. He brought this up in our interview. Um how much she's meant to you because it's being a coach's wife i'm sure it's not an easy thing because you know you're going a lot of the time um just talk about how important she's been for you uh it's 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 very hard uh on a family fortunately our family revolves around ball mm-hmm. uh liz has accepted that and and even though she sits on by herself as far away <laughs> as she can and watches she never misses a game uh uh the bad part about it, I guess, is she knows a lot about baseball, so I get to hear it when I go, why did you do this? Why did you do that? And, you know, sometimes she has a valid point, but yeah. I can't let her think that she's, yeah. you know, right. Listen, not right now. <laughs> Wait till later. Right. No, no. None of it would be possible without the support of the family, and, mm-hmm. and our family's done a great job. Good, good. Well, again, uh, Coach, thank you for taking the time to come and speak with us today. Uh, I know from 
me, Steven, Zeb, everybody at Hometown Digital and Two Guys Talking Sports. I uh, wish you nothing but success well, this thanks. season. Thanks so much. Yep, thank you. Appreciate it.